So here's the thing, if you're planning to build yourself a PC with the 13th gen, right, you've got the i5, i7 and i9, then you might be wondering, is the i7 really worth it over the i5? How much is the i9 better than the i7? Is it really worth the i9 or should I stick with i7? I had the same question and I wanted to put together this one video, this stats, so you can easily see how much performance gain you get when you're going from i5, i7 to i9. Let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So in Cinebench R23, the i7 is 4.7 or 4.8% better in the single core score and about 27 0.8% better in the multi-core score. The i9 is about 10% faster in the single core score and about 67% faster in the multi-core score than the i5. So from i5 to i7 we're gaining about 5% in single core performance, about 27 to 30% in multi-core performance and from i7 to i9 we're getting extra 5% in single core score and about extra 30% in the multi-core score. Moving on to Geekbench 5, here we see a similar thing. About 4 to 5% in single core score when you go from i5 to i7 and then about 20, 18, 20% in multi-core score from i5 to i7 and then from i7 to i9 we're getting an extra 5 to 7, 8% in single core score and about 25 to 27% in multi-core score. But now 3D and Blender. The i7 is about 30% better in the Blender, Monster, Junk Shop and Classroom scenes compared to the i5. The i9 is about extra 30 to 40% better compared to the i7. But from i5 to i9, we're getting 70% performance increase. In Photoshop, the i7 is about 10% better than the i5, and then the i9 is extra 6% better than the i7, so we're getting 10 plus 6% in performance difference or so. So in Photoshop, I'd say the i5 is really the best bang for buck. Uh, you're getting a lot of performance there. The i7 is a good bump and then a little bit of a bump of i9. In Lightroom Classic, we can see that the i7 is about 9% faster than the i5. The i9 is extra 3% faster than the i7. So you're getting only a few percent extra when going with i9 compared to the i7. So i7 will give you good performance here in Lightroom Classic as an increase in performance but i9 not so much. In Premiere Pro, the i7 is about 7.5 to 8% faster compared to the i5. And the i9 is extra 9 to 10% better than the i7. So interestingly here, the gap between the i7 and i9 is bigger than the i5 and i7. So the i9 for Premiere Pro kind of makes sense. And this is the program we're using for the editors. So that's why I've got my eye on the i9 because Premiere Pro is what we use most in there and that's where we're going to see the difference there. But interestingly, if you look at the export scores, standard and extended export score, then you can see that we're getting extra 15 to about 20% or 20, 19% uh, performance increase just because of a lot of the cores and the export performance is better in there. But overall, we're kind of averaging between 9 to 10% extra increase over the i7, which is very interesting. In Adobe After Effects, we can see that the i7 is about 7.5 5% faster, but the multi-core score is 28% faster, obviously because of the cores. And then the i9 is about 13% faster than the i7. So there's interesting jump actually from the i7 to i9 in Adobe After Effects. So you do get a little bit of a bump with the i7, about 7.5, but the bigger performance increase will be with the i9, about 13% or so, that's between the i7 and i9. In DaVinci Resolve, the i7 is roughly about 12% faster, 10 to 12% faster compared to the i5. And then the i9 is extra 3% maybe faster, but interestingly, the standard overall score is not that much uh, better than the i7. 
So basically, if you're not working over 4K media, I'd see no benefit to upgrading to i9 unless you really want the fast export times or something like that. But the i9 is extra 3 to 4% in overall difference. But if you look at the 4K and 8K media scores, then we can see that there is about 20% difference between i7 and i9 in the 4K media score and about 30, 29, something like that performance a difference in the 8k media score compared to the i7 and i9 so generally overall we're not going to see that big of a difference between the i7 and i9 but the i9 is still better depending like what you're working on in v-ray the i7 is 30 percent better and then the i9 is an extra 35 37 percent better than the i7 so we're getting a 30 percent bump in the i7 and then an extra 37 or something like that bump with the i9 which is very very interesting so hopefully now depending on your workflow and your applications what you're using you know now you know which is worth upgrading the interesting thing is that the i9 is actually worth upgrading sometimes the i9 is just like a halo product that you just you know getting the fine margins over the i7 but actually you're getting quite a bit of a bump in quite a few applications with which I didn't expect that much and I thought that the i7 is going to be much closer to the i9 but still in some of the applications the gap between i7 and i9 was bigger than the i5 and i7 but anyway all of these CPUs are very very awesome when you want to uh, get them and the best bang for your buck will definitely be the i5 just because of the performance the price uh, ratio anyway thanks guys for watching if you want to pick any of these CPUs out check them out in the description below as well as the dedicated reviews for these because you'll get much more in detail review about these you know what cool is and what do they do and what else can they do and blah 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 they're out there on the channel check them out and if you do want to build yourself the best pc for your money then check out the best bang for buck pc build guide in the description below there's a few videos there four part video pick the video that's closest to your budget and then you can adjust the pricing i'll explain it all in the video there's build guides everything in there check it out in the description below thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time Bye bye